Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the Daily Live Extra Tuesday, the 20th of July. Before we start, just let me read this. Everton can confirm it has suspended a first team player pending a police investigation. The club will continue to support the authorities with their inquiries and will not be making any further statements at this time. And we're going to do the same. We won't be talking about anything to do with that. And that's the last I'm going to say on the matter. Right, uh, hello, good afternoon, Evertonians and anyone else who is taking the time to watch this. It is absolutely roasting in the studio and outside. Um, there isn't much air in here, though, I tell you, in these lights. Uh, but I hope everyone is well. Um, Everton edging closer to three transfers. Well, two of them are, uh, are over the line and we're still waiting um, for Damari Gray, who is a, will be joining Everton for their US trip at certainly looks that way now, uh, which is good. I think it'd be really good for the three of them to go off to Florida tomorrow with Everton. I think it's good for the squad, for bonding and stuff, if all three are away with the uh, with the teammates as we uh, try to step up the pre-season. Obviously, it was good news yesterday. There were some stories bouncing around yesterday that Inter Milan were pulling out due to uh, COVID and stuff like that, but the tournament officials confirmed yesterday evening that that wasn't the case in Inter Milan are still competing in the Florida Cup. So that's good good news, I think, for people watching uh, over there. Good news for Everton and Arsenal, who are going over there as well. So uh, be good. should be a good few days, and hopefully Everton can step it up Um from now, really, and start to get ready for that Premier League kickoff. But the three players will help, of course. We needed a backup goalkeeper. Uh, I'm not trying to convince anyone that Asmir Begovic is Donnarumma, because he isn't. But we've needed a solid number two. He's coming in for next to nothing. Uh, and that will, will push Jordan Pick for the bit and certainly give us that strength, the experience. Um, and then, as you look around the other two players. We're getting Andros Townsend, who's played over 400 career games, mostly in the Premier League. Um, can weigh him at the odd goal. Great cross and accuracy. Works really hard, gets up and down. And Damari Gray, who is one of those players that you'd have to file under, just not fulfil potential. Got quick, bright, can go by players like they're not there. But for one reason or another, hasn't been able to put everything together. But what I would say is, Everton don't have anyone like that in the squad. So therefore, for one and a half million pounds, he becomes an option that we don't have. And there were times last season in games when you looked around that substitute bench and there was simply nothing to change the game. And what Rafael Benitez and, and my Marcel Brands are doing at the moment is trying to put those options in the squad that we don't have. And if we do get the sale that we want, we're still working on a fullback. That is what is ongoing at the moment. Uh, and if we if we do get a couple of sales or a big sponsorship deal or the Premier League decide in their wisdom that, you know what, it's been 18 months of COVID, so these rules don't really work at the moment, then Everton will have more room in the budget to be able to go and buy the high-end players that they're looking at as well. Uh, and I think if we did that and got to the end of, win end of the window with a couple of big signings as well, I think everyone would go, you know what, we are stronger at the end of this window than what we started it. And that always has to be your starting point and finishing point when you are um, going into a transfer window. So it's all good. Um, Pipe says, hello, Blues. Um, David Sanchez says, this is why I don't want Rafa. He is a yes man. I think you couldn't be any further wrong. I don't think Rafael Benitez is a yes man. I think whether Marcel Brands is a yes man, that's a different conversation. I don't think Rafa Benitez is a yes man at all. Uh, Everton Rose, good afternoon. Says, hey, looking forward to hearing about players signing. Yep. Um, Ethan says, Rafa is the opposite of a yes man. Definitely. Um, okay, where are we? Uh, Everton Rose says, I can see Gray being a good signer for us. It's 1.5 million. It, it's relatively, well, it's next to nothing, is it, now? What football has come for. He's only just turned 25 a couple of weeks ago. Um and like I said before, he's, he's not really, there's not really anyone like him in our squad. So we just got to, um, we just got to, to get him in, get him in, you know, integrated into the squad and see if we can get a little bit of more consistency out of him. I think one thing Rafael Benitez does do is 
he'll um, he'll have everything structured and organised, and every player will know the job. And so Damari Gray, if he wants to do well, he will have to bed into that, won't he? For one point, imagine if he comes in and does really well, and we've we've spent one and a half million pounds on him, and then. For whatever reason, in a couple of years, Everton renewed the contract, and in a couple of years, Everton won a great, you know, an upgrade. But there's a, there's clubs looking at Damari Gray and going, yeah, that spent 12, 13 million pounds on him, even 15, because he'd still only be like 27, just turned. Then it's well worth it. Everton can, you know, triple, you know, you know, quadruple what they paid for him. Then it's a good bit of business, isn't it? So I, I think for me, for one and a half million. Just turning 25, it's a no-brainer, really. We'll see whether or not he'll be a good signer. Uh, Alan says, Bernard has agreed personal terms with Zenith and Shanghai. Well, has he? Okay. Well, we'll see, you know. Um, Everton now, you know, ready to let him go. Apparently, there was a deal agreed for Bernard last Monday. And he's still an Everton player, so we'll just have to see what, you know, how that plays out. Um... Okay, where are we? Go down here. Uh, Simon Parks says, uh, McNeil is a good winger, but we need someone rapid such as Bailey, someone to, squ- to scare the opposition. Yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. Um, McNeil's a decent player. I'm going to check, right? Uh, that's that to have been someone, mate. Um, where are we? Yeah, McNeil's a good player. He's technically very good, but he's not for me. He's just not quick enough, and I think Everton do need quick players. It's as simple as that. We need people to to be able to get after teams. We need to be able to transition quickly. Dwight McNeil's a nice footballer, but I would rather spend forty million pounds on Leon Bailey than twenty five, twenty eight million on Dwight McNeil. But that's just me. Some other people might think. Um, you know, might think differently. Uh, Wayne says, worrying that if no big money sales, then no big money signings. Well, is it worrying? It's At the end of the day, we have to play within the rules, don't we? Until those rules change, there's not really much we can do. Um, we, can, we can moan about it. Of course we can. Um, but at the end of the day, what can we do? Unless there's an actual um, changing in the rules or Everton decide that they're going to uh, just ignore the rules and try to do a Manchester City situation and take the Premier League to court, then at the minute we actually have to do what we have to do. Like I said, we're trying to bring in a right back. That's ongoing. And then who knows what happens. This will go for me. Right the way up to September the 1st, I imagine this season, Everton's, Everton's business. Because they'll be trying to get players out right up until that line. Um, I think the reason why people are, are disappointed is because there's people who are on social media who spout absolute nonsense about us spending all kinds of money. You know, we're bidding £50 million for Kula Bali. We've thrown a £50 million pound bid in for Ben White. We're looking at Alan St. Maxon for 65 million. And Evertonians, some Evertonians take that as that's actually factual and start going, well, there's a hundred, we're easily spending 150 million this summer. We can't. The simple rules state we can't. So until we can bring that FFP down or the, the Premier League costing right down, we lost 167 million over the last four seasons. You're only allowed to lose 105. So, quite clearly, there's no room in the budget to buy anyone at the moment. Big, unless things are changed. Now, what will change is the stadium. Costs can come off that, I think, which is around 50 million. So, that brings it down to, what, 117 million. And then you're cutting wages. So, that might bring it under. But then, to go above it, you still need an influx. So, until we can work out either another sponsorship deal or a, a player sale, then yet yeah, we're not going to be able to go and spend, you know, big money on players. It's just the way it is. And if you get that, in, if you like kind of accept that, then you can understand what the management team are trying to do at this moment in time. If Everton waited and said, right, we only want 
Leon Bailey, um, and we want Edward from Celtic, say, and we want uh, Anguisha from Fulham, right? How much is that going to cost us, right? They're going to cost us all together a hundred million, say, for argument's sake. And Evan haven't got a hundred million to spend, but we won't have to spend a hundred million because those deals can be structured. But you're still going to have that outlay around. 30 to 40 million pound maybe for those three players if Everton go that's what we're doing and we'll just wait till the end of the window to get them and we'll see what happens and there's players that are here now that are going for nothing and we get to the end of the window and we can't do those deals we wanted to and yet the other players who could have come in and maybe give the squad a little bit of a boost we've let join other clubs because we were thinking about the, the high end ticket players then that would be, I think that would be worse from Everton. I think that would be worse management. Getting these in now for relatively small outlay and padding the squad out with a couple of different options means that you can start to focus on the high-end players that you want. So it might actually just be the semblance of a plan coming together and you go, OK, I can understand what they're trying to do now. If we get to the end of the window and these are the only three that have come in, then yeah, then maybe we can moan and go, we just haven't addressed what we needed to, really. Um, but as well as these three, I, I, it wouldn't surprise me to see another three in as well. Um, that will cost money, but we, we'll have to just see what happens. Uh, James Dunlop says, Adam Townsend and Gray had some depth in attack and options. I know these aren't the signs we're hoping for, but with FFP, we have to get behind them. Um, Pipe says Fabrizio said there's nothing between Hammers and Milan. Hammers set to stay. Well, we'll see, won't we? Um, Nicholas Sadley says if Hammers goes, it's because he wants to go or we get good money for him. Correct? Uh, Mike Pastetag says uh, hello from Fort Worth, Texas. Love the show, guys. Nice one, Ma uh, Mike. Um, it feels like it could be Texas here today. It's that hot. Uh, Wayne Ellis says loving the rainbow blues kit. Baz, yeah, it's a boss little kit, isn't it? It's a little uh, quality little kid, that. Um, Kean says, I'm melting, yeah. Jamie Kennedy says, a shrewd bit of business for Grey Towns and Begovic. Just time to get rid of the Deadwood. Uh, hello, Corin. Um, Andrew Cunningham says, par boiled. Baz, get that man on. You know what? And I'm drinking a cup of tea. That makes no sense. Uh, Nathan says... Where are we? Um, afternoon, Baz. Do you think Everton are close to agreeing a fee for Dumfries? I think they're closer than they were last week. Um, but we just have to wait and see, mate, on that. Because with me and O'Reilly as his agent, the thing can change daily. It can change daily. What I would say is last week, there was like a 20% chance of it happening. If that. I know there was other reports saying it, it was, but it was. That's what it, where it was up to last week. Um Everyone had moved on to different things. But it's a lot of that changed over the weekend. So it's moving up. So hopefully we can get it done. Um, but if not, we are looking at other, other options as well. I'd love Ridley Baku from Wolfsburg personally. Dumfries is good though. He really would improve us as well. So let's see what happens. Um, Mike Muda says, All right, Baz, mate, why do we make all our signings based on what's in matter of the day? We have the worst scouting system in the entire league. Um, I think these, Mike, are simply players that can help the squad and they're gonna, not going to cost us anything. So that's why these have been done. You know, we've if Townsend comes in, is Townsend a better option than Bernard? I would say yeah. And I love Bernard as a little... I think he's a cracking little footballer. But he's not done anything for... Let's be honest, he's not done anything since his first season. Um, and can he cut it in the Premier League? Probably not. So, you know, I think Andros Townsend is a better option off the bench than what Bernard is. Damari Gray is coming in for one and a half million. He's 25. He was 25 three weeks ago, um, three or four weeks ago. So I don't think that's a gamble at all. Robin Olsen, 7 million, they want for him. 31 to be a backup keeper and big money. Or Begovic for nothing to be a backup keeper while we have a look at Pickford for this season. If Jordan Pickford has another good season, then Everton might turn around 
you know, I've seen lots of stories linking him at United now, which is inevitable, really. Once he had the good Euros, it was going to be back to Manchester United wanting him. Um, but imagine if Pickford did have a really good season this season and United did come for him next summer for big money, then Everton will already be looking at the next big goalie. You know, I'd, I'd go and get someone like Strakosha, but, you know, each to their own kind of thing. Um, but it gives Everton that period of time to look and go, well, Begovic is 34, not a few weeks ago. We can give Jao Virginia a loan now. Well, try to get him a loan where he's actually going to play. doesn't matter if he ended up in League 2 on loan, as long as he played every week. And therefore, he would develop more in that time. So for the three for the three signings, Mike, I, I just think, you know what, they, they will improve the squad. That's my take on it. I'm not trying to convince you. That's up. You'll have your own opinion. But for me, I actually think they improved the squad. Um, I hope they're not the last three and they won't be. So, like I said, I think I'll really... We'll know more on September the 1st when the window shuts. And if Everton have got these three in and another three of quality in, I think we'll all sit down and go, you know what? Good transfer window. I can understand what we're doing, what the structure is. Because let's be honest, it's been a bit muddled, hasn't it? For a while. Um, so let's just see. And don't forget, Gabaman is back. If he stays fit, he literally is a new signing, isn't he? Um, if Moise Keane ends up staying, then there's another player who wasn't in the squad last season. So we have to do. We have to look at it that way. Uh, RCO2 says, I think it's extra smart that these are players who would star for a dozen Prem teams and they're all homegrown, which gives us wiggle room in first team signings. Yeah. Stephen Lee says... 90, uh, Stephen Lee, 1987. Everton getting busy in the transfer market. Um, this is what I like to see. Uh, Mike EFC says, Afternoon, Baz. Uh, all good squad additions, for far depth, bit of experience in actual wide roles. Big steps forward, stop gaps until we're free on FFP to get more exciting players. Absolutely. RCO2 says, Gray for one and a half million on the bench is such good business for Everton. Well, it is one and a half million for a lad that's played many times in the Premier League and has also played in Germany, uh, albeit briefly. I think it's a good bit of business. I don't think you can get many players for one and a half million quid now. Um, but that's just you know, other people might other people might think differently. But I I think it's I think that's not bad business really. Uh, Steve Kelly says, uh, "All right, mate, hope you're well." Dumfries, Gray, Towns, and Bailey Begovic. Would that represent a good summer? Yeah, I think so. I think. I mean, if if we got Denzel Dumfries in state, then there's the right back we've wanted, isn't it? Gets up and down, big and strong, quick. Um, gets on the end of things as well. So that'd be a huge tick for the right back. Leon Bailey plays off the right, quick, scores goals, good left foot. Huge tick for the right-hand side, done. Then you've got Townsend and Damari Gray as options in the squad. Tick. Reserve keeper, what we wanted, yeah. Personally, I still want a centre midfield player and I want another striker. Um, and I think Everton are looking at another striker. Whether they choose a centre midfield player, I don't know. I've seen something today, very loose link, and I, I don't really pay much attention to it, but it was Gomez for Pereira. Uh, not Pereira, Gomez for Nunes, rather from Sporting. I think we'd all take that. Andre Gomez, you know, come in, great season on loan, and then hasn't quite been the same, had a terrible injury. But if, if he wanted to go back to Portugal and they wanted him and we wanted Matias Nunes, then that would be a no-brainer because you're getting a midfielder out for a midfielder in. He's younger, uh, it's a different profile to Gomez. Something like that would represent good business. Whether that happens is that could just be pie in the sky. But if that something like that happened, that I think that'd be decent. Uh, Bobby C says I uh, haven't signed Towns and then Grady. We need another winger like Bailey McNeil, and the money will surely be used for Dumfries and Nunes. I think Everton still want another winger, a fast left-footed winger. Um, most definitely. Um, so yeah, I think we do need another one because then you've got the Charlesons covered. Don't forget Andros Townsend can play centrally as well, um, but can play on the right or the left. I think Bernard will go out. Who's to say who else will go out the door? Um, so, there you go. Uh, Mick Flynn says, All right, lads, I'm just wondering, with the right-back being so essential, can we buy one without selling? 
or are we that close to FFP? We need to sell this. It's just the structure of the deal, Mick. So Denzel Dumfries, if it's reported, it's somewhere between, I've seen 13 million, it was more than that. But if it was between 15 and 20 million, say, then Everton could might say we can pay that over four years. We'll pay five million pounds a year for him. Then that's the deal. And, and Everton might be able to pay the five million up front. They might say, no, we want it in three, three uh, payments. So, you know, essentially seven million, uh, seven million, and then six million or something. If Everton can stretch to that sound. So it, it won't be. And this is what I'm saying. If we were to sell Moyes Keane, that 40 million that come in can almost be. It's a gamble, but you could almost spend a hundred million pounds off the back of that forty million. It's a gamble because next summer you've got to find the shortfall, and that's where Everton might then go. Well, you know, next summer we're selling the Charleston, so we're going to do give him this season. He's going to give us everything. Next summer we're going to try and sell him for seventy-five million, and then that clears that. It brings that in. It gives, and then you'd start to then become what Leicester have done, and that what Everton should be doing, what a normal club would be doing is looking then at options for Richarlison all season. Going, He's going out the door, but see him and him. We can get them two in and him for the money that, that he's going and we'll build like that. And that's really what Everton needs to be doing. Regardless of whether the league goes, tell you what, Osmanov can put whatever in. We should be trying to think of things that mean we can look after ourselves. And if we just need a little bit, we can go to Osmanov and go, can you only just give us 40 million for him? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Loose change, there you go, lad. Um, but ultimately, we should be trying to sustain ourselves. We'll only probably start doing that with a big sale. But that's kind of what we have to do. Uh, Dan says, reminds me of when we signed Cuca Martina. Only brought in as backup, but ended up playing a bigger part. Uh, hopefully, Townsend doesn't find them playing too regularly. He played 36 games for Palace last season, so he's fit. You know, he's fit. 36 Premier League games as well, so he's, he's fit, isn't he? And works hard and all that, so... Listen, you've got to sometimes... We've had a go at buying all sorts of players, haven't we? And we've gone, oh, I'm so excited to watch him. And oh, this looks great. And it's been, it's been garbage. So let's see what happens. Uh, Everton Crow says, I think McNeil will be more of a replacement for Hammers. OK. He's not, he really isn't for me, Dwight McNeil. Really, really not. But other people like him. Um. Jonesy says, no one can complain about two free transfers and two million for Gray, just wait and see. Um, basic ticking on, he says, bit warm, Baz. Yeah, it, it, is, it is a bit warm. Cam's in the studio and confirms that it is absolutely roasting in here. Uh, Sophie says, afternoon, Baz. Will we bring in a right back? We are so hamstrung by FFP. It's all about, it's just the terms, Soph. The terms are a deal. If Everton can agree with the terms, you know, get it to a stage where the terms of the deal are acceptable and they can stretch to that for now, then yeah, they can bring him in. You can't, if, if PSV said he's 25 million and we want the money now, then we'd have to go see it, right, and go looking for other people because we can't afford that down payment. Um, and not a lot, not a lot will, to be honest. Um there's only certain clubs who pay all that money up front anyway. So we are looking at other stuff and that's what we have to do. Um, afternoon, Everton Rose. Um, Adam, uh, where are we? Okay. Michael Schaller says, what do you think about ha uh, the club putting hammers in the shot window? It's a lot of quality to lose. I don't want us to get rid of hammers. I know I've seen some people saying good riddance and all. I mean, I don't... That you. I don't understand a fella that created more chances than about six of our players in in the third of the games. Um, scored, he was involved in 15 goal contributions, plus he was second in the pre-assist league, if you want to have such a thing as well. The man's just pure quality. And if you're saying Everton's only world-class talent, I'm not bothered. I, I don't care if he goes, then... I, I don't know what you're hoping for out of any kind of creative team because he is all the creativity in Everton's team. So for me, I wouldn't be chasing him at all. If he really wants to go, 
and there's a bid on the table for him, that becomes a bit of a different conversation then. But if he's if he's kind of like, you know what, I'll do another year, then we should be saying, please, do another year for us. Uh, ben says, good day from Sydney. Good day, Ben. Hope you're all right. Um, Chris says, I Baz, love the streams. Quick question, what should we do with Anthony Gordon? Should we sell, loan or keep? Personally, I'd say loan with the new season. Now, because these two wide players are coming in and Everton are still looking for another wide player, I'd want him to go out on loan, personally. I want him to do a full season. Uh, Blackpool seems like a decent place. I mean, they've got the rest of our under-23s. Um, well, I think that, you know, they're in the championship. Wayne Rooney is looking around for players for Derby County. I think if he could get a move to Derby and play for Rooney with that crowd, because Derby get good crowds as well. I think he needs a season playing in the championship. Or just playing every single week will be a start. He went to Preston and he, he played a few games and then he was on the bench. But I think another year on loan I think then, by next summer, I think we could make a decision then on Anthony Gordon. Is he going to be good enough? Looks lively so far this season, in the pre-season. But is he going to get enough games? I think some clubs would be made up to take him because he's direct. If he can build himself up a little bit as well and get that game intelligence from playing every week, I think he could be a good asset. Um, so that's what I'd do with him. Lockie White says, Baz, if Chelsea don't land Haaland, do you think Dom would be sold to them if they came in a big offer? There was a whisper. Um, they'd have to come with a big offer, wouldn't he? And then what would we do? I think what Everton might, what Everton could do, is say, right, we'll have Tammy Abraham plus fifty million for Dom or whatever, forty million. I don't know, but I don't think Everton have got any intention at this moment in time of selling Dominic Calvert Lewin. Um, yeah, Dan Parker, I'd love to see James Ward Prowse at Everton. Okay. Uh, Everton View says another reason to keep Hammers is the commercial side, very much so. Um, FC Gardening and Landscaping Services says Mina should be kept. People need to understand he's our best centre back. Uh, well, the decision to be made on Yerry Mina, isn't it? Um, because he's got less than two years left on his contract now. So Everton do have to make a decision on him whether they're going to offer him a new one or whether they're going to try to. If they really want a new centre back, I'm not convinced whether they do. But if they do, it's about trading them in, trading them out. Um, I like Yeri Mina. I, I agree. I think he is our best centre back. I think him and him and Ben Godfrey could be a really good centre back partnership. Um, but we haven't seen him enough, have we? Really? Uh, Blarke says, uh, "What do you think about Moise Keane if he plays in Florida? Do you think he'll do much?" I hope he does. I want him to look really sharp because. I want either the money to come in for him or for us to be able to see that he's good, you know, we can use him. So, you know, that's what it's all about. Uh, John Jones says 30 goals came from Richie and Dom. Where will the other 30 goals come from? Well, exactly. If we get rid of James Rodriguez, well, you're taking out half a dozen straight off the bat there. I actually think Richarlison will get more this season than what he did last season. Um and that's where your midfielders have got to come in. That's why we need a goal-scoring winger. It's why we need Abdelai Decore to get back to his Watford level. So push him on. Let him get forward. Because um, he can get half a dozen a season. So, you know, you've, then that's where you that's where you add your goals. Uh, Joshua Barber says he's coming to Florida. Baz can't, mate. We're, we're literally not allowed into Florida. Um, the American government yesterday said, you know, UK are basically on on the red list. Uh, so I'm absolutely devastated, mate, because it would have been fantastic. Um, but hopefully we'll get a chance next summer to get out there and meet you all and do a live show from there because it'd be great. Um, okay, last few now before we finish. Um, Aaron Martin says, get the likes up. Cheers, Aaron. Uh, Adam says, can we remember the pain we went through to finally replace Lukaku? We need to keep Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I refuse to go through that phase again. Absolutely. Uh, Gavin says, why don't you rate McNeil, Baz? He's a nice footballer, but I, I, I just don't think he's what Everton need. Everton need fast players. He's not quick. 
If, I've, honest to God, I've seen him quite a few times, and he's got a nice left foot on him, and he scored. He did score a belter against us at Goodison last season. But if you if you're telling me it's a choice between him or Leon Bailey, it's Leon Bailey a thousand times out of a thousand for me. Um, but it's footy, isn't it? Everyone will have a different opinion. Um, Celtic Vape says, love Yeri, but with contract length and injury worries, if we got 20 to 25 million for him, it's a no-brainer. Uh, Chris Werby says, uh, when do we start to look in on cashing in on Luca Dean? Turn 28 and in a couple of years, will have no resale value. Should we do a Leicester sell next season and reinvest? The only We can only sell when someone comes in for him, can't we? Um, and this is the thing with the Thierry Small situation. If the lad had any insight... Um, or he had decent people advising him, he would be looking at Luca Dean and going, he's 28, he's 16. You must have to stick it out another 18 months and you'll be, you'll be pushing him out the team and it'll be yours at the age of 17 and a half, 18. But what can you do? Um, Mr. Dorf says, which backup striker realistically would you like us to sign? Uh, I'd like Huang Pichan from um, Leipzig. I think mean, because he can play anywhere across the front three. Um, Solomon Rondon as an outside shout there for a centre forward target man who, who will be on the bench and come on and give us like for like. Um, but listen, if you if it was open checkbook time, then I'd be wanting someone who'd, who'd give Dom a run for his money about playing, and someone who you'd go, you know what, we need to play a system that gives us two strikers in this, not just one. And therefore, then you're looking at people like maybe maybe taking a chance on Ivan Tony, uh, Terra Moffi at um, you know in France, he'd be one who you could go. Although he'd still get in for about eighteen million, he's he's only twenty one. He'd be a good signing. But Edouard at Celtic is one who Everton could go and, and probably should try to get. Um, but I think in terms with the money the way it is, I don't think we can go after those players to just put them on the bench. So, uh, Tazum says, uh, McNeil reminds me of Billy Etanov. Uh, hello to Akram. Um, Dan Stars once says, Some of you have to remember that a lot of money goes on wages, not just the initial transfer fee. Uh, Tazum says, McNeil, like all British players, is overrated. Uh, Art says, You reckon Rafa will do a better job than Carlo? Yes, I do, actually. Because I think that, I think if you said to me, there's 20 world-class players, choose a manager out of Rafa or Carlo to manage them, I'd choose Carlo Ancelotti. But Everton don't have 20 world-class players. Everton need organisation. Everton need coaching. Everton need someone who won't always be going, no, I just want, I just want a, a world-class player. Um, that's where Everton are right now. And I actually think Rafa Benitez will work 10 times harder than Carlo Ancelotti to improve Everton. But if it, if it was a world-class squad, I'd want Carlo. Because he's, he's because with world-class players, a lot of them, you have to massage egos. Benitez doesn't really do that, but Ancelotti does. So the two different types of managers. But in terms of if you're asking me, do I think who will do a better job with this current Everton squad, I actually believe it'd be Rafa Benitez out the two. Uh, and, and Rafa Benitez wasn't someone who I would have had in my top five to take to replace Carlo. But I actually, now he's here and I'm behind him and he's working hard and all that. I actually think that he would do a better job than Carlo Ancelotti with the squad we have. Um, right, last couple, I promise you. Uh, get those likes up. 800 watching, only 150 odd likes. Thank you very much, uh, Chris. Much appreciated. Uh, Ari says, "Please explain the Holgate." Yeah, I don't, I don't understand why people don't like Mason Holgate. Um, I, I get he wasn't very good last season, but the year before he was brilliant. Um, I think he's, a, I think Holgate as well could still, could still make it in centre midfield as well. Um, I'm not sure Olaf whether Lewis Dobbin will go with them to Florida. I think he's in. You know what? I think he's in. He's in a chance to couple of. He's done really well, Hattrick at the weekend as well. But he was out injured a lot last season for the 23s, and he only come back the last couple of games. But he started this pre-season really sharp. Um, 
Robin says, Baz, looks like you're enjoying a typical Aussie day, mate. Need the viewers to sort out these like buttons, though. Nice one, Robin. Yeah, it, it is roasting at the moment. Pedro's come in and looks like he's ready to sleep already because it's so hot in this room. No, it's because I'm boring. Well, what is? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Bobski says energy need fit. Everton need energy, fitness, and structure. Rafa is more likely to bring that than Ancelotti. Um, Everton will announce signings today. Um, so yeah. Uh, James says hit the likes and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Yeah, give us a little subscribe if you are new here. Welcome. Thank you very much. We've also got a general football channel called. Uh, the footy show, which is sound. That's just not Everton related, just all kinds of footy. So go and give that a little sub as well. We do appreciate that. Uh, Art says, I'll back Rafa 100%. And I also believe he'll do a better job with our current squad because Carlo obviously struggled with our squad. Uh, Evan Dave says, Bernard is overrated and overpaid. Uh, NSNO says, errors and mistakes, Holgate. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, and, okay... Let me just refresh our patron before we check out of here. Um, Andrew Cunningham says, how does loans affect FFP, a backup striker or deaf middle on loan, midfielder on loan? Yeah, I mean, Andrew, that is one option. Loan with a view to buy next summer. It's getting the clubs to agree that. This summer more than ever, given they've been hammered with COVID, not having fans in stadiums, everyone is scratching around, looking for money um, any way they can get it. So... That's what we're trying to do. Uh, Michael says, other than the names shown already, who would you like to be brought in, excluding Bailey? Um, well, I'd moose at the Arby if we couldn't get Bailey from Leverkusen. His quality. I think he'd be really good. Uh, Arch says, uh, thoughts on Dom's new look? I think he's sound. I think he's, he's what he wear. I love the fact it annoys so many lids who want him to wear one tens. I think he's boss. Oh, his moustache is boss, mate. I, I've got no issue with him. I've got no issue with him. I think he's cool. He can carry it off. He's a young lad. He's just had an amazing season. Went to the yard. I've got no issue with him at all. I hope he comes back, keeps that mad hair, keeps his moustache and bangs in 37 goals. And then when he does an interview, has his bag on. Be absolutely made. The pads waving to me, yes. I'm just, I hope he wears a kilt. I don't think he can wear a kilt. Oh. No, no, first day back, just wear a kilt. Oh, okay. Ped wants him to wear a kilt on the first day back. Yeah, why not? Don't could be made up. Don't could be made up. Uh, Chris Warby says, Baz, will you be doing any watch alongs for the games in the US? We're not doing watch alongs at half one, are we, Pedro? Ped, mate. We're not, are we coming in here, though? You know. Well, if we are, lads, that's just tough, isn't it? You know what's good? You know what? The first one's half one in the morning, but the second one's 11 o'clock, isn't it? So maybe we'll do the second one. But we will let you know if we're doing the watch-alongs. John Jones says, boss show, Baz. Cheers, mate. Um, okay, where are we? Let's go, 15, says Everton. Should just take all the wingers at Leverkusen at this point. Uh, England's number one, England's number one. England's number one, says Adam. Um, Art says he can get away with, with, with wearing clobber like that. Yeah, he defo can. Uh, Keith says our right hand side has been a major problem for well more than a season. Now, Servers and DCL also a problem last season. We are addressing these two areas. It's a plan. You can see a creative mid and striker too, especially if Hammers does one. Uh, Joshua Early on the super chat. Nice one, Josh. Says, Begovic, Gray and Townsend. Gray couldn't hack it in the Prem first time round. Begovic isn't good and Townsend is another stupid signer. Fair enough, mate. They're, Josh, you're well entitled to your opinion and especially when you're playing super chat. Um, but at the end of the day, it's a wait and see, isn't it? We're not going to get an amazing number two. It, it's just not happening. So people, I don't know who they wanted. And if you've only got a limited amount of money, why would we pay £7 million for Robin Olsen? Doesn't make sense. So that's Begovic there. Then you're moving on to Andros Townsend, who's free and is experienced and is the, at the most accurate crossing last season. And we've got the best header of the ball in the Premier League. So you go, all right, lower wages, couple of years deal. 
free transfer. And then Damari Gray is one and a half million quid or something. For, for a lad who's just turned 25, if he's no good, we can sell him next summer for five and we've made a profit on him. So uh, it's fair play, fair play. Uh, for me, it, it's not really an issue. Um, James says, will there be a second one with Inter pulling out? No, Inter aren't pulling out. They've confirmed they're going. Um, so there. Where we go. Uh, Dead and Dave says, who cares about what a player looks like as long as he performs on the pitch? Definitely. Uh, Craig says, is there going to be anywhere to watch the Florida Cup for free? I have no idea, mate. I am. It's on Premier. Okay. Is it? Premier it's on Premier Sports, Ped said. I haven't seen that, but there you go. There you go. Um, yeah, onwards to the truth. I Baz, love your commentary. Damari Gray is going to be a good signing for us. Yeah, listen, he's, he's one and a half million. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Um, we needed a squad and we're getting some players, so... There you go, there you go. Right, nice one for everyone joining us. Uh, much appreciated. Thanks for hitting the like button. I mean, not enough of you did, but all the ones you did, well in. Um, thanks for subscribing as well. Don't forget to subscribe to the Footy Show channel if you want just general football. The link is in the comments section there. Uh, don't forget if you want to join us on Patreon, we'll be live later as well. We'll have Cam with us live on that one as well. So have a good day. Stay cool and we'll see you later. Take it easy. Bye.